Hey everyone, so in this video I will be talking about height maps. So how we can get the grid manager to take into account the height of uh, the various tiles and meshes placed in the grid area. So if we check the properties of the grid manager and scroll down we can find uh, this procedural setup here where we have height map setup. We can also see that trace for walls is set up to true as per the last tutorial. Uh, trace for walls. So um, you have three options here for height maps. You have false, one level and multi-level. So false is what I've been showing in the videos till now and what this means is that uh, the grid manager just assumes by default that every tile um, within this range that we set up uh, within 12 tiles uh, should be added to the grid as locations. Um, and unless we do something to remove them from the grid, like adding uh, tiles that block movement to them or so on. So at the moment we have a flat grid here, so if we set this to one level uh, or multi-level or anything, uh, then there will not be any changes since it's a flat grid, right? Um, so when you go from false and to one level you will see that this box appears around the grid and this box it shows um, the area in which the grid manager will attempt to look for uh, tiles what is meant by tiles here then are any uh, meshes or anything else that blocks the path trace uh, collision channel so if height map is set to one level uh, this means that the grid manager will try to trace a line trace down uh, from the top of this bounding box to uh, the bottom of this box. And anything that it hits will be added as a grid location. Uh, we can change uh, this bounding box here uh, through the max and minimum grid height. So we can see here that we uh, go from a height of a thousand and until a minimum grid height of zero. It is possible to go below zero and I will show that later. So let's see how this works. Uh, I can add a cube again to the grid and resize it here and this as I've said in previous tutorials, uh, if I find the collision, the default for meshes is um, to block path trace. So it should block this uh, line trace that we use to set up the various grid locations. So now that um, the height map is set to one level, we should be able to walk on top of this tile, and we can. So that works great. However, if we choose uh, where we set up another one, which we make a lot taller, you will see that we cannot move on top of this tile. And this is because of how we have set it up in uh, the procedural settings here, which is the height imp uh, impassable cutoff. And this is the cutoff in Unreal Units, uh, at which point the toolkit will uh, say that a, a difference in height between two tiles is too great and the edge between, between them will be removed. So we can change this to something much higher, like 500. And I will change this as well. I will talk about this shortly. And that was not enough. Let's add some more. Uh, hmm. Ah, I know what is going on. So this might be instructive, so I'll leave this in. Um, since we're tracing for walls here, and we are tracing then from the center of a tile uh, to the center of another tile um, at uh, this trace for walls height. So it goes 100 unreal units above this and tries to trace to the center of the tile adjacent to it. And this cuts through uh, this corner here because the difference in height is so great. Uh, so if we turn this off, uh, then we are able to move on top of this. But yeah, this will rarely be an issue since I don't assume people do want to have this these large height differences. Uh, but if you do in your game and you need both, uh, just ask me on the forums how to tweak it and I'll let you know. 
Uh, but yeah, for any reasonable height, that will not be an issue. This height difference is relative to um, the tiles that are next to it. So if we again set it to 150, yeah, then we can see. So we can move onto this tile. We can't move directly down to the others, but we can move uh, through this other tile. There are reasons you might want to use height map set to one level, even if your grid is flat. And this is if you have sort of a sparsely populated grid. Uh, so let's see if you're making a dungeon or something like that. Um, so to set up an example, um, actually before I start doing that, let's let me show a handy trick. Uh, if you go to edit and edit your preferences, uh, you can change the various grid snapping settings in the editor. So if I go here and I search for grid, uh, we will find, yeah, that there are decimal grid sizes here and we can add another one, which is the size of our tiles, which by default is 200. So I can add one that is 200 and drag this into place. Now we should be able to, yeah, we can choose 200 as a snap size here. So this is useful if you're working on a square grid and you're placing actors that are not, you know, tiles or units that automatically snap. Or in any case, it might be useful for hexagonal grids. You will, of course, not be able to use this feature, though. Um, but yeah, so then we can place easily uh, these meshes at the center of tiles. So let's build a mini dungeon. We will resize this a bit there. That's nice. And just make a couple of rooms like this. And we can have like a path between them. Oops. Let's see. Something like this. And now we can walk on top of them. Now, of course, we can still move on the rest of the grid here. So this doesn't really do much, but we can then disable walkability on this grid. So if we turn off collision plane walkable, now our entire playable space is really within this little two room setup here. And we can still see all of these tiles, of course, so we can just uh, turn off, let's see. Yeah, show default tile. And now this is our entire playable area. We can do some more work here. Maybe turn this into like a little stair. Like up here. And now we can walk up. But if we go the other way, let's see. Uh, it might still be within the bounds. But if I choose all of these and I move them down a bit. Let's see. You can see that I'm not able to move down here. And this is because these meshes now are below the bounds that we've set up. But we can always change that. So if we go here to the minimum grid height, I'm going to change this to minus 400. And now we can see that we can move even below uh, the height that the grid manager is placed at. We can visualize how the grid manager looks for tiles by going into the grid manager. And let's see. In the event graph here again, we still have the setup grid arrays in the beginning. And here it creates grid locations. And here you have three different types depending on which height map we're using. At the moment we're using one level. So we can see here that we're tracing then from the top of the grid uh, or this defined box uh, to the bottom. And we can display this line trace so that we can see it during gameplay. And you can see one uh, trace going from the very top of this box here uh, and looking for it until it reaches the bottom here. Uh, if it ever hits uh, any um, anything that blocks path trace on the way, it adds that grid location 
to the grid as we can see it does here. What happens if we place something above here though? Uh, if I take this and I drag this up to create like a roof and if we try playing now we can see that we can no longer uh, move below this. Uh, we have, yeah, you can see that we can reach this by shooting but yet we can't move onto it uh, because now these tiles are blocked by these uh, meshes up here. Uh, so to make this work we need to have multi-level grids or if you're just using like a cosmetic roof so this is not supposed to be work, uh, walked on you can just turn off collision and again you'll be fine. Let's see, let's turn off this trace debug display but say you want both of these to be walkable and uh, then we reset this back to normal and then if we select our grid manager and we go to multi-level we will see oops nothing hmm what happened here um, oh yeah more informative mistakes uh, during testing earlier I changed this value so let's set it back to default this is the height between levels so this is when we're generating the multi-level grid and um, any tile that it is found it uh, traces upwards to see if it has at least this space between itself and the roof above it so this was set way too high at the moment this is the level between uh, the minimum level that has be, uh, to be between one tile and a tile above or below it. So the default is set to 200. Uh, so if we now try, we should be able to move below it. Yeah, great. And it should also be possible now to move up to this level here, provided we have some form of access. So we can go to, um, let's see, geometry and add a stair, why not? And uh, Let's see, there, and like this, and then increase the number of steps, let's see, yeah, now we are able to walk to the top, and we can walk below again, uh, I can change the move of this guy to make it clear that we can access both at the same time. So if we change the move to 20, we can see it is possible to move both up here and to the level below. A problem of course is that this uh, roof here is occluding the tiles below so it's pretty awkward to be able to move to these tiles here. Uh, so there's a built-in way you can fix this problem if we search for a platform uh, there is an actor called platform which turns translucent if you have are zoomed uh, a certain distance uh, this is a child actor that's just a larger platform uh, so you can place this and move it up like so let's see Bit to the side. Yeah, and we can see now we can move on top of this and if we want to move below we can zoom in and then we can access the tiles below. We are still occluded though by the markers here on top and this also looks a bit weird with the stairs here so if you have a map uh, where you are have like slanted places you can stand and so on so uh, these tiles um, don't look good on your map it's possible to change uh, these markers for decals so you can choose the grid manager and let's search for decal and if we check use decals we can now see that these uh, conform to the mesh here and they also disappear if you zoom through them so that's useful decals are also useful if we're using landscapes so if we add a landscape here, just a small one, I can use the grass texture included in the toolkit and create. There's a landscape. Let's add some bumps here and there. 
and then back into select mode. There we are. So now we have a landscape. So like I've said, something that blocks path trace doesn't need to be a simple static mesh. It could be something like a landscape. So if we now hit play, we see that we can move on top of this landscape. And the unit will move as appropriate on the curved landscape below. And the reason we see the borders here is of course that's where we've uh, defined the area of the grid. So we can increase the size of the grid manager to something larger. So we can move on a larger area. So there are a couple more options that I haven't mentioned. If we go to the grid manager in the procedural options here. Uh, so we have this auto edge cost based on height. This sets the costs between uh, adjacent tiles based on the height difference between them. Uh, so that's what, what means that uh, they can't be moved between if they are a certain height apart. Uh, but this cannot be disabled if it's multi-level because it's uh, that's a part of how multi-level grids are set up. If it's one level or false, this can be disabled if you want to. Uh, and then there's this height slow increment. Uh, so you have an impassable cutoff. This is the height between adjacent tiles at which you can no longer move between them. While the slow increment, uh, it uh, decides how uh, much extra movement it costs to move between tiles that are a certain height apart. So if you set this to be 75, that means that the difference between these tiles is lower than 75, then the cost is 1 to move between them. If it's uh, between 75 and 150, then it is 2. If it's 150, then uh, it's impassable. If we increase this, then it would be you know, uh, 0 to 75, the cost of 1. 75 to 150, a cost of 2, 150 to 225, a cost of 3 to move between them, and so on. Um, so that's something I added when I first uh, made this toolkit. I don't know if many people actually use that function. I don't know of any games that um, apply movement costs between tiles in that way, but yeah, there you have it, in case you are the one person who needs that feature. Okay, I think that will do it for this video. Thanks for watching.